We're here at ITU Telecom World 2014 in Doha, Qatar, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Minister jean philbert Segimana, who is Minister for Youth and ICT for the Republic of Rwanda. Minister, thank you very much indeed for being with us here. Very good to see you again. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to meet you. Now, the uh, central theme here at ITU Telecom World 2014 is future in focus. What key developments in technology, policy or business do you see as key to the near future? Well, I think technology is really transforming the landscape, uh, political, economic and social across the world, especially in Africa, where there is a takeoff that uh, one can feel is happening as we reach the critical mass of people and businesses getting connected. Now we are looking into the future trends. We are already into 4G LT in Rwanda, uh, super uh, high connectivity. We are already looking at 5G coming up. But uh, we are also looking at things like Internet of Things, smart cities, big data, analytics. And those new developments are going to even accelerate the rate at which ICT is transforming lives in Africa. Education is getting transformed. Healthcare is getting transformed. You know, lifestyles are getting transformed. Payments and, 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 and you name it. So uh, this calls for uh, changes and um, adjustments in our policies, uh, not to control, but to embrace those changes. What role do partnerships play in this, uh, in this future for you, in terms of uh, public-private partnerships, cross-sector, regional and international? Private-public partnerships are very important because they bring on board the necessary investments that are needed, while governments are busy setting up an environment to make uh, uh, that new economy, the digital economy, grow. We need to fuel it with investments, and uh, we've found, especially in Rwanda, that public-private partnerships are critically important. But also regional cooperation on uh, such issues like cybercrime uh, uh, are very important. There are things that countries cannot do in isolation. As the world gets more and more connected, uh, it becomes imperative to re reach out uh, beyond our borders and cooperate with uh, our, our neighbors, uh, but also with the entire globe. And that's why we're here. And how do these developments translate into reality on the ground, improving people's lives? One thing that people always have to keep in mind that is it's that it's been proven that uh, the more broadband penetration you get, uh, you, the more GDP growth and GDP contribution. In Rwanda, it's been an incredible story where we have watched the contribution of ICT grow uh, as part of our GDP. Uh, from just 2% in the last two quarters, now to 3%, project to go to 4%. And that takeoff is really accompanying the penetration of broadband. And we can say that that formula is indeed true. Our people are living it. So the wealth that is created, if you find ways to spread it across and so that it trickles down to everyone in the population, it translates actually into less poverty in the country. Our story is that over the last five years, we've been able to pull one million people out of poverty. So ICT uh, uh, fueling and driving an economy translates into better living conditions for everyone. Now we're here at ITU Telecom World 2014. We've seen you here at a number of, uh, of ITU Telecom Worlds, a number of ITU events. What makes this event special and, and what's, what are you doing special here this year? What we are bringing special this year is a Smart Africa Zone. I'd like to invite everyone to visit. Um, the Northern Corridor countries, uh, Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya, and South Sudan, have spearheaded this initiative. But it goes beyond the Northern Corridor, uh, with such countries in West Africa, like Senegal, Mali, uh, in, 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 the part, in the central part of Africa, Gabon, joining. We are a set of countries that have decided to put ICT at the heart of our social economic transformation. And we're looking into the future. We're looking at uh, the knowledge economy that is upon everyone. We're looking at the past where uh, Africa used to be driven by resources, but today it's knowledge, it's information, it's human resources, it's the brain power that is going to power Africa. So that's what we are bringing here. We are sending a strong message. We are calling on investors to invest in putting up the infrastructure that new economy will need to invest in building human skills that will drive that economy and invest in applications and services that will deliver the value in that new economy. So this event is very much key in your calendar then? Absolutely. 
the Transform Africa Summit that gave birth to the Smart Africa idea, now it's a project, was first announced in ITU Telecom World in, in Dubai in 2012. The summit was in 2013. Now we are going to announce Transform Africa 2015. It's going to happen in October 29th. The whole week is going to be full of events and it's our opportunity to invite every participant to join us in Kigali for another agenda setting summit next year. I was going to ask you, have you got a particular message to participants, but I presume that's very much it. Absolutely. Come and, come and join us in Kigali. Yes. And, uh, and finally, I just wanted to just ask you a question which I will be asking uh, all the people coming into this studio here. What single technological development do you think will make the most difference in the next five or ten years? Well, I'm looking at artificial intelligence. Machines becoming smarter you know, uh, collecting data about us, whether we wear them or find them at the office, uh, wherever we go. In fact, technology surrounding us becoming smarter, and at some point, and it's scary, smarter than human beings. What's going to happen after that? Uh, I think these techn technological developments are going really to transform how uh, the, you know, the, the human civilization, you know, lives. And, uh, where, whereas many people are scared about what could happen when machines become smarter than human beings, I think that once technology can take care of much of what we are busy doing today, we will get better at ourselves, doing the things for which we were in fact created. Minister Jean-Philippe Sengamata, thank you very much indeed for being with us today and uh, we look forward to catching up with you again in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you.